We've now finished up our first little application using Docker. We're now going to start working on our second application, which is going to be a little bit more complicated in nature, and it's going to require us to learn some more advanced features around Docker. Let's first take a look at a mock-up of what we're going to build. All right, so here it is. This is really a classic example of Docker in action. You're going to find a lot of other applications out there that are very similar in nature. So the purpose of this tiny little application is to make a Docker container that contains a web application that simply displays inside the browser the number of times that, this per that someone essentially has visited this server. And so you can see right now it says number of visits 10. That indicates that this page has been visited 10 times. Now in order to build this, we're going to need two separate components. First off, we're going to need some type of web server, something to actually respond to HTTP requests and generate some HTML to show inside the browser. To actually store the number of times that this thing has been visited, we're going to also make use of a little Redis server. Remember, Redis is an in-memory data store. You can essentially think of it as a tiny little database that sits entirely inside of memory. The only purpose of the Redis server is going to be to contain the number of times that the page has been visited. Now, something to be aware of here, yes, we absolutely could store this number of visits inside the node application itself. That's totally an option. However, just to make this thing a little bit more kind of sufficiently complicated, we are going to be making use of Redis. Now, I want to think a little bit about how we're going to generally architecture this app using Docker. Now, your first kind of impression here, or maybe your first guess, might be that we're going to make a single container, and inside that single container, we could run both our Node application and a Redis server. Now, don't get me wrong, this is totally possible. You could take this approach right here. However, if this application ever got popular to any degree, it would start to have some issues. Let me tell you what the issue would be. Let's imagine that you start getting a lot of traffic to this little, somewhat useless website that you've put together. As you start to get more and more traffic, you're probably going to want to introduce more web application servers to respond to incoming HTTP requests. And so in order to make additional servers, you might create additional instances of your Docker container that contains both the node application and an instance of Redis. The issue with this approach is that every one of these different Redis servers would be completely disconnected from each other. And so one server, one Redis instance over here inside this Docker container might think that the page has been visited 99 times, but then some other Redis instance in another container might think that it's only been visited three times. So in general, we would definitely not want to create multiple instances of a Redis instance for a single app. Instead, we would want to have one single instance. And then if we need to scale up the web application itself, we could just scale the node server and make additional instances of the node server. So essentially what we're going to do is be something that looks a little bit more like this. We are gonna have separate Docker containers for both the node application and the Redis server. Each of the Docker containers that holds the node app will connect somehow over to the Redis instance in this separate container and store the current count or current visit variable inside of that Redis server instead. Now for the first iteration of this project, we're not going to worry about scaling just yet. So we're really going to be setting up something that looks like this right here. We've got one Docker container that contains our node app, and then a second container that has just the Redis server inside of it. So with that in mind, let's take a quick break right here. We're going to come back to the next section and we're going to start writing out the code for our node application. So quick break and I'll see you in just a minute. 